what you see here on the table are a pair of Hex Armor bite-proof gloves. Supposedly, these can withstand the bite of a venomous snake. What I'm gonna do is slowly move my hand in towards the snake's nose. Let's just see what the aggression level is as I move my hand in toward its face. Okay, it's a beautiful night in Costa Rica, and I'm sitting next to one of the most iconic snake species in this country. That is an eyelash viper. Now we've worked with this species in the past. In fact, I found the yellow phase of this snake out in the wild several years ago. But this one here is actually an ambassador for its species that was born and raised in captivity. This snake specifically is used to help educate people about the snakes that live here in Central America and why you want to safely avoid them at all cost. Now this snake is not necessarily as toxic as something like a fertilance, which makes it the perfect subject matter for tonight. What you see here on the table are a pair of Hex Armor bite-proof gloves. Supposedly, these can withstand the bite of a venomous snake. Now, obviously, I wouldn't try this with something as large as like a Western Diamondback, an Eastern Diamondback, or a Fertilance, but the Eyelash Viper has smaller fangs, and I feel a little bit safer free-handling that snake with these gloves. We'll get to that risky entertainment in just a few moments, but first what I wanna do is take an educational look at this incredible reptile. Now the eyelash viper is an arboreal species, which means they're primarily found up in trees. And as you see the snake right here, gently clutched on this branch, it almost looks as if it's a gargoyle, staying completely still. And this is usually exactly how you will see these snakes out in the wild, waiting in ambush. They are ambush predators, and all they need to do is hang from a tree branch and wait for something to come close. They primarily feast upon animals that are gonna be up in the treetops. Lizards, frogs, bats, even birds fall victim to snakes like this. And you see that position the snake's in right now? That S-curled shape, head pointing down, something gets close, it strikes out, and with those hinged fangs, injects a hemotoxic venom. Now what's unique about the eyelash vipers as compared to many other pit viper species is that when they bite, they actually lock on. When you think of something like a fertilance, it's gonna strike out, inflict a bite, let go, and then track its prey once it has succumbed to the venom. But with a snake like this that lives up in the trees, it needs to bite and hold on. If this guy bites a bat and that bat falls out of the tree, the snake's gotta go all the way down to the ground to get it. So this snake wants to bite, hold on, and then it's got its chance for a meal. Uh, the name Eyelash Viper, where does that name come from? If you take a real close look at the face of this snake, you'll see two little modified scales growing just above the eyes. Sort of makes it look like horns, or in this case, a pair of eyelashes. Now scientists believe that these modified scales perhaps help them navigate through the arboreal environment, maybe pushing away plant matter or possibly to help keep them camouflaged. These snakes are incredibly good at keeping themselves hidden within the environment. Now, if you're to go out into the Costa Rican rainforest at night, the thing that's actually dangerous is that if somebody grabs onto a branch, let's say you're moving through the environment and you grip onto something, helping yourself navigate. If one of these snakes is in the tree, that's how you're accidentally bitten. These snakes are not necessarily going to ever be aggressive towards humans unless threatened. However, if you were to unfortunately be bitten, it is a hemotoxic venom, and that means medical emergency. Now, you guys clicked on this video because the thumbnail likely has this snake close to my hand. It's like, oh my gosh, is Coyote going to get bitten by a venomous snake tonight? I'm not attempting to provoke a bite from this snake. The reason that I'm going to try to handle this snake with bite-proof gloves is because it's a fragile species, right? A snake of this size is rather delicate. It's not something that you want to squeeze and hold on to. You don't want to pin its head. You don't want to have complete control of the snake. The idea is that if I can hold it gently with these gloves, it may be a tactic that we use in the future to handle small venomous snakes. Coral snakes, sidewinders, eyelash vipers, these are perfect subject matters for using these bite-proof gloves. I also have to be aware of how close this snake gets to my face. So keeping it out in front of me like this is extremely important. Remember, they've got a rather far reach and a snake like this can lunge forward nearly two thirds the length of its body. If I'm bitten in the face by a snake like this, it's going to be a very bad end to my day. Whew. It takes a little bit of nerves when you start thinking about handling a venomous snake. And while in the past I've interacted with many different venomous species, to actually be hands on with one without controlling its head is something that I have not attempted before. 
So if you're ready, it's time to free handle the eyelash viper. What I'm hoping is that I will be able to get it to just kind of come right out onto my hand. So you see that? The snake is backing its head up ever so slightly. Now that position right there definitely could warrant a bite. But you'll notice the snake is not aggressive in any way whatsoever. It's sensing my hand. Now you see the tongue flicking out. It's investigating me saying, okay, this is something new in my environment, but it doesn't look like something that I would necessarily want to eat. So I'm going to gently see if I can bring it up. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can get you to come out here onto my hand. There we go. There we go. Okay, this is going really well so far. Really, really well. There we go. And I just want to make sure that I'm not constraining the snake too, too much. There we go. Oh, I'm going to keep you right there. That's perfect. I'm very happy about that position. Now, if I just keep my hand like this, you see how it's causing the snake to balance itself into a curled position. That is absolutely perfect. Now on camera, it's tough to tell exactly how close that snake is to my face. It probably looks closer than it really is. So I don't want any of you to think, Coyote, you've got that pit viper way too close to you. Trust me guys, it would take a huge jump for it to be able to leap out and get me in the face at this point. It's also why I'm keeping my hand slightly here blocked just in case something crazy happens. But if I turn it like this, you can really get a great look at that snake's profile. They are just so incredibly beautiful. And like all pit vipers, they have a heat seeking pit and this snake is capable of sensing all sorts of different heat registers. So if this snake spots something like a lizard, this snake is using its incredible eyesight to be able to identify animals that do not have warm blood. Notice the vertical pupil that expands and contracts based on the amount of light in the environment, which helps them to see incredibly well at night. And for anybody that's afraid of snakes, the fear, which is called aphidiophobia, you can see that this is not something that is aggressive toward humans. You may be saying to yourselves, well, Coyote, you said that this snake was born and raised in captivity. Doesn't make a difference, guys. It's behaving the exact same way that one of these snakes would in the wild. If you're not swinging your hand in front of it, if you're not poking at it with a stick, if you're simply admiring it from a safe distance, it will be a great experience. That's probably also a great spot for me to give you guys that stereotypical warning where I say never go out into the environment and try to handle a snake. Now the people that use these Hex Armor gloves are typically professionals. Anything could happen here. I could be bitten. While I do trust the gloves, I would never want you guys to be in a position where you could accidentally receive a bite from a snake like this. Now, like I said earlier, the reason that I'm using these bite-proof gloves tonight is to test out whether or not free handling smaller venomous snakes like this is a good tactic for us moving forward. So if I were to physically grab onto the snake or pin its head down with a snake hook or hold it with snake tongs, it puts a lot of stress on the animal. You can see how calm it's being right now. And this is an awesome way for us to be able to get these animals up close for the cameras without putting a lot of stress on them. I'm gonna try a little experiment here. What I'm gonna do is slowly move my hand in towards the snake's nose. Not to necessarily provoke a strike, but let's just see what the aggression level is as I move my hand in toward its face. Very slowly. Look at that. Snake just basically stays in gargoyle mode. Yep, I bopped you on the nose just a tiny bit there. You can see it's kind of curled its head back in a little bit of a strike pose, saying okay. You got close, let's not push it too much further than that, and I won't, but that's exactly what I wanted to try to determine. Is this snake feeling completely calm because it's not restrained? It has no reason to strike out and try to bite me. Wow, what a cool experiment this was tonight. Determining that using bite-proof gloves is a great way to interact with smaller venomous snakes. It's allowed me to stay calm, the snake has stayed calm, and we've gotten a really cool Central American species up close for the cameras. The one and only eyelash viper. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, I'm gonna place you back behind your tree branch. Sound good? <laughs>